Hello, everyone. I'm Brennan Marcello. Welcome to another episode of Social Distance. Our guest today, Oregon coach Mario Cristobal, a lot of success here. Um, changing the culture at Oregon, changing the way Oregon plays and the way they're viewed on a national landscape. But Mario, I, I guess the general feeling from a lot of folks who, one, either don't pay much attention to Oregon or just watch a game or two is that, man, Oregon looks like an SEC team. They, they look tough in the trenches and all that. Do you like that comparison? Do you dislike it? And how would you describe the way Oregon plays under you? Oh, well, I think um, I really like the way we play. And uh, I'm big on making sure that uh, when we talk about us, we talk about us as an organization. I love the way our players play under this staff and under the leadership and ownership that the players have in the locker room. We have brought in a blueprint that is all about physicality, hard work, commitment, discipline, effort, toughness, and pride. Those are the principles of our off-season program that carry over into the season. So it's what we want to do, what we want to be, and we felt we feel like we've made tremendous progress, but we're still not where we want to be. But making ground there fast, both from a development standpoint and from a recruiting standpoint, so we're really excited about the future. I think uh, last year, about this time, you, your staff, you guys visited Alabama and Georgia. Obviously, you've got some roots in Alabama. What did you learn from that trip? Because um, I remember seeing you quoted as saying, "Hey, the gap between us and." the powerhouses that you've seen in the playoff is just not that w as wide as some people think. Well, you know, I had the benefit of being there for four years and serving as the assistant head coach, as well as a position coach. I mean, it afforded me the opportunity to learn about a blueprint that's very um, specific to development, development of the mind, the body, um, the physicality, the demeanor of a football team, the mindset, and everything we've done has some kind of, aspect of what we did over there and we've carried over to the University of Oregon so I knew it but I want our staff to see it in motion and in action so they can gauge okay this is what we're trying to do let's see where we're at and I think our staff left there feeling like okay we're, we're closing the gap and closing it strong and I thought last year we showed how that gap was closed and how all of a sudden you know we were known for being a physical team we ended up having one of the best offensive lines in football and bias, I think it was the best one. Uh, the Allen Trophy winner as well and, and leading the country in some of the more physical uh, statistical categories like, you know, sacking the quarterback and negative plays, forcing negative plays and preventing negative plays. So um, we feel like now we have to take another step with that blueprint and just go full throttle as to what we want to be. And, and we feel that we're going to we're going to reap the rewards of so how do you do that? Um, obviously, without a big piece uh, in quarterback Justin Herbert. I mean, you return a lot of skill position players, a, a running back who's a thousand yard guy, but obviously everybody wants to focus on that quarterback situation. How do you feel about where you're at right now, and and who's a starter? <laughs> well, Tyler Shuck walked into the spring ball as a starter, and he's less spring ball as a starter, but. We're going to make sure that he's subjected to competition just like everybody else on the roster is. So, um, but to, to claim, um, you know, what every spot's going to look like without even having finished spring ball and having a summer and going into fall ball. Right now, uh, the focus is making sure that the culture that we instilled is now taking care of business like it needs to, knowing that these circumstances are not unique to us. Everyone is being exposed to the exact same scenario. And that now it's going to be on the players to make sure that school's being taken care of, that they're maintaining themselves um, in great physical condition so that when, you know, things get really, really going, that we are not behind anybody, that we are at the forefront because of the culture and the things that that culture calls us to do. You know, you've got Oregon back to winning Pac-12 titles, and I've been so impressed with just the way you guys play, especially late in the season when other teams seem to be waning a little bit. You guys just really – you guys take control, especially in the trenches. Where do you guys have to make that – how do you make that next leap to where you're in the college football playoff? Well, you know, we got really close last year, but we all know that being close, um, you know, when you're 12-2 and two, – as opposed to when you're nine and four the previous year, I mean, going from 12 and two to that 13 and one, 14 and no mark, that's exponentially harder than making the leap from nine and four to 12 and two. So the gap has to be closed in terms of from a coaching staff standpoint, we have to make sure that 
we are flawless and airtight in everything we present to our players. We know what we have. We feel like we have a, a good understanding of what we can be good at and certainly the things we have to improve upon. Um, and at the same time, we, we've had to continually develop and increase the talent uh, level in our locker room on our football team. And, and recruiting has certainly been a, a tremendous plus for us. It's going and trending that way again for the third consecutive year. And, you know, we, we think of it in thirds, right? There's talent acquisition, right? There's player development and then personnel use. I think the hiring of some of the staff members we have had this offseason with uh, Joe Moorhead, as well as Brian McClendon, Rod Chance, these are three excellent football coaches, teachers, and mentors. They bring a lot to the table, and we are excited to watch them work with the talent that we have and get our guys going to that next level. You know, I, I, you probably, you maybe not have thought about this, but I, when I heard about you hiring Joe Moorhead and obviously the situation you went through at Mississippi State, it kind of reminded me of just how when you were at FIU and you got a second chance and here you are now at Oregon and he's at Oregon as, as an assistant and is such a tremendous offensive mind. The things he comes up with is amazing. Um, you're seeing that more and more in college football, guys getting second chances on big levels and having success yourself at Orgeron at LSU. Uh, I'm interested when you brought in Joe, what were those conversations like and, and how are you guys meshing and what, and how does that help as far as having a guy on your staff who's been through life as a head coach? And then obviously some of the, the ups and the downs. Well, he was the top recruit right away. And um, we were surprised at uh, the way things went down at Mississippi state. But when they did, we also saw it as a great opportunity for us and for him as well. So in reaching out to him, it wasn't uh, very difficult to see that he was not only a great coach, he was an awesome human being. I mean, made of the right stuff, principles, values, family. And I'd been a big fan of what he had done as an offensive mind and as a head coach, you know, both at Fordham um, and some of the things he did at Mississippi State, certainly as a coordinator at Penn State. Uh, so for us, for myself, he was a difference maker. And you're looking at a guy with a lot of head coaching experience that brings a lot of different things to the table, ideas, has seen and been involved in situations and circumstances where you need solutions. He's been through that. You know, he's got great ideas. Um, he's a great sounding board. And um, you couldn't ask for a better situation to bring someone with that experience and that type of quarterback coaching acumen to go coach a young quarterback, right, with a new system uh, surrounded by really good talent. So it's uh, for us, again, it's a home run. We're very fortunate. How would you describe the offensive philosophy, what it was last year going into this year, your expectations as far as mm -hmm. how you'll approach things with Joe leading the charge? Well, you know what? We, we made improvements, certainly did. The run game became more of a downhill operation, started playing more physical um, and started making some more explosive plays. And uh, with Joe, I think Joe is uh, an absolute mastermind at creating chunk plays. And if you look at football the last – several years, right? Third down, um, conversion rates, the middle eight of the football game, explosive plays, all those things, red zone ball, right? All those things um, end up being the difference in winning or losing. So, and Joe has excelled in those aspects of the game for so many years. So, um, and he brings, he brings so much to the scheme in terms of everything has a compliment. There's an answer to the responses from the defense. So the quarterback isn't stuck. Every play has an airtight aspect to it. You know, if this is taken away, this is your answer. If they're both taken away, well, this is what you do. So um, all in all, you know, and not just the RPO game, but just the quarterback runs, uh, the downfield uh, passing system, the intermediate and quick game. Uh, he's, he's been, in my opinion, and those that have been around him, he's dynamic. Uh, briefly, I want to talk about Brian McClendon. I, I, you know, from my time – being in the SEC country in Georgia and South Carolina, he was a tremendous recruiter. Is that proving true there at Oregon as well? And, and what's his role with your staff and how would you describe him? Well, again, another home run hire. I mean, a guy that uh, I felt like we've won recruiting before recruiting players even started by getting coaches of this caliber. Uh, Brian was a guy, obviously crossing paths in the SEC was always a nightmare to go against on the road, but what stuck out even more was his development of his players on the field. You know, he had played the position at Georgia, right? Coached it there as well. And um, tremendous experience and ability to communicate, articulate, connect, 
and did a good job as a play caller as well. So he brings a wealth of experience because um, he's so much more than just a recruiter. I mean, this guy's a developer of talent, a father figure, a mentor, a tremendous teacher. Brings a lot of juice and energy to the table now. This guy, he's uh, he's special, and he's a, he's a guy that's called him before. So he will be a pass game coordinator for us uh, as well. It's one of his titles. But he um, – another unbelievable addition. We feel very blessed, but, you know, we also uh, recognize the fact that this is Oregon, and uh, thankfully, you know, we are, we are able to attract that type of talent, you know, from a coaching standpoint. What, what makes Oregon different than other Pac-12 college football programs today, you think? I think the commitment to the student athlete. I think that uh, the investment is like nothing else, you know, in the entire country. I think everything is geared towards the student athlete, the student athlete experience, the way the academic regiment is structured, as well as the life after football opportunities with internships is something that families, players, prospects, they they feel like they're walking into their their second family, knowing that they're going to be taken care of, mentored. They're going to be challenged, right? Because over here, that's the best of the best, the elite of the elite, and um, that they're going to have something very different here that they don't feel in the other places out west, where it's uh, the spring game is going to have you know forty to fifty thousand people at it, right? It's going to be a just complete passion and pageantry, twenty four seven. It's uh, to be an Oregon Duck is a really, really big deal. Um, but again, I, and, and I also want to say that uh, super impressed and uh, with the rest of the teams in the Pac-12 as well, I just uh, always going to be a little bit biased. We have uh, the most special place, and we want to continue staying humble and hungry and driven and elevate the standard. What's that pressure like now that you're going into every season and, and Oregon is expected to contend for the Pac-12 title? Oh, I wouldn't want it any other way. I just uh, – why do it? I had, I had good tra- a good training ground as a freshman at the University of Miami during the days of Jimmy Johnson, Dennis Erickson. There was, a, there was no other thought process. You, know, you do it to be the best. You do it to, to dominate at every possible opportunity, knowing that the football is a wild and crazy game with a lot of different things that can happen and that you have to get on edge and stay on edge to make things happen, to make sure that your team is always in a position to win, you know, to have a chance to win. So um, I don't, I don't really feel um, that word pressure to me comes when you don't, when you're not prepared and the uh, preparation is at a premium here 24 seven. I, w- I want to talk a little bit about your, your personal life, your background. Do uh, uh, you got some MMA background, at least some training, right? <laughs> well, there's, there's, a, there's a good background there. There's a, <laughs> There's a good background there. <laughs> I mean, I, I see you on the sidelines. I'm like, that's a guy who one works out, but knows how to take care of himself if uh, the need arises. I had some great teachers and instructors and, uh, you know, was able to do some great things and compete. And so, you know, I just have always kept it out of the limelight in the past, but very grateful yeah. to those that have taught me because it certainly, it was a life-changing experience and something that to this day still am involved in and participate in practice in. And it's a, uh, I think it's a life changer. I really do. What What are your specialties, and what have you learned from that? Dis, those disciplines. Well, I think those things they they grant you a, a different type of confidence. You know, um, it also more importantly teaches you respect or anything else. A respect for a discipline and the hard work that goes into it, and always understanding to never uh, never take it for granted, never abuse a privilege of having a, you know, a skill or an opportunity or authority. Make sure that uh, staying along the lines of being humble um, are always at the forefront of this equation. And certainly when you, when you practice and delve into an art like that, that's always prominent. That's always a priority of every lesson you learn. So it was very, very helpful to me, especially um, in the early days of coaching, just yeah. understanding how important that is. What do you think has changed the most since your playing days to, to now? Obviously, the you, technique. You I mean, the whole yeah. lineman doing this number versus using their hands. Yeah. Equipment. Um, man, the pace of play. The pace of play. I just, uh, I mean, now you'll never see a huddle now, or you rarely see a huddle nowadays. I mess with our players all the time. I'm like, you see that thing right there where he's in a circle? That's called a huddle, guys. You know, 
You see that with a quarterback sneaking up behind the center? That's like taking a snap under center. That's, you know, that's yeah. how it was done back in the day. Heck, if you watch the, even the late 80s, you'll see receivers, flankers, and a three-point stance, you know, spread out wide. So, no, the game has changed. The pace of play, surrender conditioning, certainly the, uh, the CrossFit aspect that's worked in all the explosiveness and change of direction and speed and deceleration work, it's, uh, it's taken off. You know, it really has. And that's why you see so many gurus, aficionados, experts in the field, just training guys all over the country in the offseason. It's, um, it's, it's more competitive than it's ever been. And certainly from an athletic standpoint, development standpoint, higher than it's ever been. I'm absolutely certain that you're excited to be able to get your players back on campus and, and obviously do so safely. Um, but what are your some concerns as far as players? Because I know every coach is like, I hope these guys are in shape. I know a lot of coaches are just like, hey, at least just trying to maintain sprinting shape so you're here in some, some form of uh, uh, you know, physicality where you're going to be able to pick up and at least keep your stamina at, at points. But what, what's the feedback you've been hearing from your, your players as they prepare to return to campus for voluntary workouts? Well, they're all excited. They want to get right back at it. And, you know, they see uh, you know, the season looming you know, on the horizon, so they really want to get together. They miss each other. That's the biggest thing. They miss the camaraderie, the interaction on a daily basis. And, um, but they also know that this is now a different setting environment and culture in terms of uh, dealing with the virus, the pandemic, and um, that we have to provide um, guidance, that we have to provide an environment and an atmosphere and parameters that keep their safety at the forefront of everything that we do. We're very fortunate. We are in the safest or one of the safest states in the entire country with very few cases. And all that means is that we're going to be even more careful. You know, and we're lucky to have the medical staff that we have, the facilities and the resources that we have to be able to provide them with a situation that they're going to feel confident and good about. You know, um, they certainly, uh, they've been away for a while. So everything from screening, uh, especially as it relates to, of course, you know, testing guys to check on everybody's health. And then also having, um, you know, physical assessments, right, conditioning assessments before even getting started, functional strength movements, um, checking everybody from a mental health standpoint as well. A lot of guys have been isolated. Um, I mean, it's, you do what you would do with your very own son. That's the best way to put it. And you're going to check everything possible, right? Cross every T, dot every I, as to make sure that the inside and the outside are in, in the right frame, you know, of mind and of body. So we have a checklist that would take you about four and a half hours to go through with me. Uh, as they return, but uh, I feel really confident about it. Uh, we're waiting the final decisions as it relates to the actual start date. And as soon as we do, you know, we're looking forward to, to doing things the right way and getting them back into a, 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 um, a regimen. The, those, uh, those physicals and everything you look at, are, are, those, are those comparable at all to what uh, the folks at the NFL Combine go through with all that screening and everything? Well, I, I would say that there's, there might be some exercise, but it's different. I mean, we're looking at conditioning assessments, which over there, it's more physical trait and uh, ability assessment. So it'll be different. And we have a pretty good idea of their abilities. We've tested those guys before. So it'll be more about making sure that they're healthy and that they are in good enough shape to participate at whatever level that is. There will be an acclimation period. I mean, there will be some time to to get in the groove and we got to be very mindful of that. And everybody is different. Everybody is. So uh, kudos to our training and medical staff. They are off the charts. They're ready. Two quick things. Uh, how do you replace that offensive line that, that you, that was so, so great last year? Well, they were as good as I've ever been around. Um, possibly the best that I've ever been around. They, uh, those guys together, Gosh, you're looking at the accumulation of four guys starting for four years together for the most part. And we knew that that day would come. So we have recruited extremely well uh, and developed extremely well where we actually expect our guys to pick up right where those guys left off. We, uh, we're a very trench oriented operation. You know, when it comes to those guys, um, I, I feel like we have the best O-line and D-line coaches in the country and Coach Mirabal and Coach Salavea. Excellent graduate assistants as well. Uh, I'm always over there. I'm like the extra GA. You know, I try. <laughs> I want to let our guys coach, but I'm in, I'm involved in there because I know that our skill go, our skill coaches and our coordinators they do an awesome job with them. So, just the way we practice, the the amount of reps that we've logged, I expect our guys 
to be really, really good and for it not to be long until we are playing at the same level those guys last year played. And finally, just give us a prediction of the record. I'm sure you're very open to that and just telling us exactly how many wins you believe your team's going to win. I'm just kidding. I never have done that and never will do that, and you know that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I look forward to watching your team uh, this season, and, and the way you've built things there is, is uh, quite remarkable uh, in your approach. And uh, I think people obviously have started taking notice the last couple of years, but this past year, uh, especially, and I know this is an important year for you like any, but uh, I think you've kind of instilled in that culture what to expect year to year, and you can start getting that ball rolling like a lot of elite programs can. So I look forward to it. Thank you. I appreciate your kind words and uh, certainly appreciate you having me on the show. Mario Cristobal on social distance here on 24-7 Sports.